Hi, I'm Jason Mears, and this is Google Cloud VMware Engine 102. What problems does it solve? So in the previous video, we talked about um, organizations wanting to extend an existing data center into the cloud. And we talked about the fact that you've probably got one or maybe two VMware data centers uh, on premise as part of a private cloud and you may have looked at moving to a public cloud and running something like gcp um, and having um, gcp vms that run in that cloud but there's a there's a difference or an incompatibility between the two platforms and the two types of vm so we also talked about the fact that many organizations have looked at this because they've got a second data center that they'd like to move to the public cloud and then decommission that second data center. I see it quite a lot in my job when it's usually because that second data center is coming to the end of its life and needs to be uh, refurbished or redone. And somebody decides that now would just be a good time to close that second data center and move to public cloud. So we've got um, one data center on premise and we've now got one in the cloud. We've still got our VMware platform for running virtual machines on at one side, and we've now got a new platform in uh, Google pu uh, Public Cloud for running stuff on. And we discussed that there is a difficulty in actually moving those VMs because they run on a different platform and a different hypervisor. So we've got to do some kind of migration or conversion in order to do that. So there's a, there's a couple of different things to take into account here. So we've got that same scenario there. And we've kind of decided at this point, okay, we're going, we're going to start to migrate things from one platform or one hypervisor to another. So in an ideal world, we'll, we'll run some kind of conversion and migration process. And then what we'll do is once they're at the other end, we'll, we'll take them away. And hopefully that will work first time and there won't be any problems with it. But it might be that we have to kind of go back and try again or we do it a couple of times. Or it might be that we end up in a situation where some of it's across. But we've now got this environment where some things are on-prem on one platform and on one hypervisor. And other things that form the same um, application or service are now on another platform, on another hypervisor and there are some difficulties with that when we do a refactor or a replatform so the, the first one in my mind is latency and um, we've never really had to consider latency before when everything is in the same server room or the same rack or the same switch so things that happen in milliseconds or microseconds are now having to travel across the public internet to a cloud provider and back again and latency can be one of those things that kills an application or stops it from working or makes it time out now, if it doesn't kill your application or doesn't stop it working, it might be that it works, but one of the next things to suffer might be performance. So the application might work, but the users might notice a difference in performance, um, and it may be an annoyance, or it might be something that makes the application unusable from, from their perspective. Um, the other thing to consider is networking. Um, when you've got a, a data center and everything connected locally, um, everything's on the same subnet, everything works nicely. Um, but when you're routing across other networks or public networks or the internet into other data centers and cloud providers, it's not always easy to keep the same IP addresses, IP ranges and subnets. So you may find that you have to either re-IP address things or you have to move everything at once because the whole subnet needs to go in one go. So networking can be another problem. Um, the other big one is that we've never had to pay for traffic before. We can use as much int, uh, network traffic as we want. We can do as much communication between applications. and We've never had to worry about that cost before. But now traffic or network bandwidth in and out of the cloud is now a chargeable service or a chargeable thing. Um, it may be for some organizations that the traffic costs are actually more expensive than the compute and the storage. But we've never had to worry about this before. So this can come as a surprise to some people and, and possibly make the whole thing a um, a worthless exercise because um, not only have we increased the latency and the performance, but we've now increased the costs of doing things. So again, traffic costs are another thing that you need to consider when if we're going to split things and run them across two different hypervisors or two different data centers. So just things to, to bear in mind. Um, the other problems with refactoring replatform, uh, I'm going to use a, an acronym here, RAMPS. This is something that VMware certified design experts use, and they basically take the premise that if I change the architecture of an environment, I need to consider RAMPS, and each letter of that acronym stands for something. So if I change something fundamental about the environment, I need to 
um, consider the impact that has on recoverability so how easy is that going to be to recover and ramps works on a principle that a change can either be positive negative or make no difference and so how, how does that affect the recoverability of the solution how does it affect the availability of the solution how does it affect the manageability how does it affect the performance and how does it affect the security so every time we make a change like this it's usually a good idea to consider it from this point of view as in is this just a simple change or have we fundamentally changed something about the architecture which has positive negative or indifferent effects on on these particular criteria so that's the ramps methodology that a vmware certified design expert would use there is another one which is not part of that but this is what i tend to think about when we're looking at refactoring or re-platforming I would look at the, the best case and the worst case. And the best case, if I do this refactor and replatform, is, is that everything goes well, nothing breaks, and the best case is that nobody notices that I've actually done anything. Um, the worst case is that things do break, things do go wrong, and I either cause an outage of a couple of hours or days or affect the uh, business's ability to, to operate. So um you know consider the best and the worst and if it's if you look at it from a risk reward point of view the risk is breaking applications and taking out um applications and services or stopping end users working for days or weeks or months um and possibly affecting the you know the financial state of the business um and the reward for that is that hopefully nobody notices you've done anything so again you know kind of need to consider really why we're doing this refactor and replatform um i've heard people say that they decided to move to cloud and what they realized is all they actually wanted was the cloud consumption model they didn't actually want to refactor replatform or recreate all of their it environment they just wanted to change the way that they paid for things now google cloud vmware engine is one of those things where you can change the cloud consumption model and the way that you pay for things without having to refactor or replatform your entire environment and i guess the other thing to consider here is um what you can do is get yourself into a situation where you're now supporting two three or four different platforms concurrently at the same time and maybe the complexity is actually getting worse so if you've got a, a cloud first strategy but haven't really thought through some of the you know kind of finer points of it it may be that um, if you're going cloud first to simplify stuff you might have an environment that ends up eventually looking like this and it might be because you've decided to do that or it might be because um, your strategy isn't clear enough defined that other people just go and do this for you so i'm not a big fan of cloud first i think a better approach is probably cloud appropriate but more important than all of that is just have a strategy rather than cloud first just be a slogan or a catchphrase actually understand how you're going to do it um, rather than just paying it lip service so that's the end of, of that video some of the things that it can help you with and what i would say as part of the takeaways is that google cloud vmware engine as part of a vmware hybrid cloud could help you simplify your environment rather than make it worse it could reduce the uh, duplication of software and tools rather than make it worse and reduce duplication of staff and functions again rather than make it worse um, and just things to consider are um, if you're looking at doing something that fundamentally changes the applications or the platform um, just consider things around recoverability availability manageability performance and security something that um, a vmware certified design expert would refer to as ram because of the first letter um, of each each part of the acronym so that was uh, 102 what problems does it solve in the next video 103 we'll be talking about what benefits you could gain from moving to a hybrid cloud on Google, uh, Google Cloud VMware engine so thank you very much for your time and I hope you found that useful